So far we've looked primarily at text-to-text -to -text models, and that is probably the part of generative AI that gets the most attention. However, text-to-image is what we're going to look at now. Not just text-to-image, but something somewhat related, which is multimodal. So text-to-image, it's not necessarily an LLM that you're dealing with at that point. It could be stable diffusion or something else, like Dolly. You are giving it a text prompt, though, to describe an image, and then it gives you something back. So, for example, you could give ChatGPT wide image, usually you want to say wide or square, of a cute bulldog. Now, it will generate this for you. This is really actually working more in multimodal sort of mode because I could even give it a picture of myself and say render as a cartoon. But here we're, we're using Dolly and it tells you that it created an image of, of a bulldog. And if we look at this, we'll see that there's, there's the bulldog. And then it does massage my prompt a little bit to make it, to make it better. So I gave it a very, very nondescript prompt and it attempts to make it better. That's something that Dolly does. This also helps you to stay within its acceptable guidelines so that you're not generating obscene images. If you want to generate obscene images, you need to use a uncensored model, and there are certainly ones of those available. So let's look first at the text to image models. Now there, I just used it in ChatGPT, but we're going to see how we can do this through the API of OpenAI. So there's a variety of ways that you can go about this. Stable Diffusion. If you want to generate images right on your own computer, Stable Diffusion can be a way. On Mac, there's something called Diffusion B. And on both platforms, there is something called Dream Booth. And you can download custom models, and by the way, you can go completely uncensored there and generate whatever you can think of. So here I use Stable Diffusion, Diffusion B actually on the Mac, and I said generate a cat in a windowsill. Stable Diffusion does exactly what you ask it to do, and nothing more, really. So it's generated the cat, and that, that is the cat. If you want to use Dolly, Dolly does a bit more. So Dolly will take that prompt and it will enhance it for you. So a cozy scene of a cat sitting on a windowsill with soft natural light streaming in from the outside. The cat is sitting gracefully, looking outside with its tail curled around its paws. The windowsill is decorated with a few potted plants and the outside view shows a peaceful garden with green foliage. The room inside is warm and inviting with subtle shadows by the light. The cat is sleek fur and a relaxed posture. So it took, it took my simple prompt cat on a windowsill and it absolutely ran with it. So here is what it comes up with. And you can see that is essentially what was described. So you can take that and then feed that back into Dolly and modify it so that you can say things like, maybe you don't want a warm, peaceful room. Maybe you want a sleek, modern looking room. I, I don't know. But there's, there's the cat. Multimodal models are quite important as well. And this is really taking the world by storm. So for example, you might have a medical record. In the United States, we use something called Epic and it has a program called MyChart. So I had my mother who was asking, she sent me a screenshot of her iPhone app, Epic MyChart, and she just sent it to me. And I just pasted the screenshot right into, right into uh, GPT-4.0, which is a multimodal model. And I asked it, okay, what's, what's going on with this? And I, I gave it the questions that my mother had of me. And it, it answered them really quite well. So it's able to look at just screenshots of things and answer that. I'll give you an example here that I did in a multimodal is I, I created this image here. This is my own image. I hand drew it, which you can certainly tell by the sloppiness of the lines, and basically played tic-tac-toe against myself. 
So the thing that's cool about playing tic-tac-toe against yourself is you won't always win. Sometimes you'll, you'll draw yourself, I guess. But this was a win, 0-1. But I was able to ask it, who won this game of tic-tac-toe? And, uh, and it, it basically comes back and it tells you that O won. So that is an example of, of multi, multimodal. You can also give it an image of, say, just a normal person, and it will come back with a cartoon if you tell it to make that person a cartoon. So this is the beginnings of what we're going to look at with image-based neural networks, so text to image, and also multimodal. We're going to look at a number of interesting things. We will look at first just using Dolly on generating brand new images, generating changes to existing images. Then we're going to look at multimodal where we can do things where we, we send an image into it and it processes that and, and tells you something about the image. Then we're going to look at the previous example that I gave you where I use LLMs to create a full-length book, but we're going to let it add illustrations as well. So thank you for watching this video, and if this is useful, please subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss anything else on this class. And thank you for watching.